Okay, let's revisit Euler circuits before we leave this topic. In the Euler circuit case, there is a certificate for a no answer. And let's just make that explicit. Because if you're given a graph, what two qualities tell the whole story? Is it connected, yes or no? Is it connected, yes or no? And you indicate two vertices that are in different components, and the referee can check that there's no path between them. Or you point out that there's a vertex of odd degree. And once there's a vertex of odd degree, you can't have an Euler circuit. Because in a circuit, each vertex, you go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So it's got to have an even number of neighbors. So in the Euler circuit case, if you say no, you can provide a certificate. That makes it fundamentally different than the Hamiltonian cycle problem, is that in general, no one knows how to provide a certificate for a no answer. I hope this conversation has made some sense to you. All right, now, because there doesn't seem to be a way to attack things in general, there's considerable interest in special cases, and we're going to begin to look at one. So first, let me introduce you to the notion of a bipartite graph. This is a topic that we will study extensively for the remainder of, of this course. And so bipartite graphs will be visited and revisited many times in the upcoming uh, couple of months. So a bipartite graph is a triple. You specify the two parts of the vertex set by saying that's A and B. And then you specify the edges. And the edges are always pairs where one element is in one set and the other element is in the other set. It's a very natural notion. So here my vertex set has two parts, letters A through G and numbers 1 through 5. These kinds of things come up. It's, it's, a, it's a five jobs and uh, seven employees, and I've got a edge between an employee and a job if that employee is capable of doing that job. Just, 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 these kinds of things just come up all the time. Two different sets of objects, and there's some relationship between them. Unlabeled bipartite graphs. OK, just take the labels off. Now, the important thing that you've lost here is you don't know which one is A and which one is B anymore. But other than saying one side is A and the other side is B, then it's, it's you haven't lost much information. But if the graph is disconnected, you lose a lot. So here's a graph. And if I just say, this is a bipartite graph. You, you don't know what I really mean. This is like the dot, dot, dots issue. Which side is A, what's in A, and what's in B? So I, here I've highlighted three vertices, the red one, the green one, and the blue one. Are they all three in A? Are they all three in B? Are two in A and the other one in B, or is the other way around? And which ones are which? You don't know. So if, if you're going to mess around with bipartite graphs and unlabel bipartite graphs, you've got to be more explicit about what are the two parts. All right. Now here's a class of bipartite graphs that uh, the pictures aren't, aren't much fun to draw. They're also not very interesting. So the complete bipartite graph has m vertices on one side and n vertices on the other side. And it has m t 
times n edges. In other words, every possible pair, one from A and one from B, is joined by an edge. Hopefully, in drawing this figure, I did not leave out any pairs. If my track record for drawing pictures holds up, I've left one out, but I don't, I think I've lucked out and, and not done that. This is a picture, of course, of K75. It's the same as K57. Five vertices in one part, seven vertices in the other part, all possible edges. And you see, just the sentence makes more sense than the drawing. The complete bipartite graph, K57, has five vertices on one side, seven vertices on the other side, and all possible edges. Why, why draw a picture? All right, Hamiltonian cycles in bipartite graphs. So just an observation. If you have a bipartite graph, and it has a Hamiltonian cycle of any, and I don't care how you get it, then the graph has to be connected, and the size of A has to be equal to the size of B. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? I don't know about how many edges it's got. I do know something. Every vertex has to have degree at least two. And here, some vertices have degree two, but others have degree three. I don't, does anyone have degree four? Maybe not, but it could be. And in fact, this could be the complete bipartite graph K55 in which every vertex has degree 5. All right, let's take this graph. Take the complete bipartite graph Kn, n plus 1. Does it have a Hamiltonian cycle? No. That's what we just observed. The two part sizes aren't the same. So there's no way to go back and forth and visit every vertex exactly once. You've got to leave somebody out. But that's got a lot of edges. All the vertices have pretty big degree. A natural question to ask is, is there some kind of threshold where if every vertex has sufficiently many neighbors, then you can always find a Hamiltonian cycle. And you look at this picture and you say, well, whatever that threshold is, if it, if it exists at all, it's got to be pretty big. You got to get at least half the number. And OK, this is nearly half, because you see, if you take the vertices on the big side, their degree is the number of <laughs> vertices on the small side. So that's slightly less than half. Slightly less than half. 